choosing a height can be intimidating. So let's talk about how you can pick one that's right for you and then how you can train for that goal. Let's talk about how to pick a hike. There are a lot of things you can consider when choosing something that's right for you. Whether it's distance, elevation gain, the terrain, how much you'll be carrying. All of these things can make a big difference in how that hike is going to feel for you and how much training you need to do. Now that you've picked your goal, let's talk about training. Typically, you want to aim for about eight weeks of training before your objective. Ideally, there are four things you want to consider when mapping out your training plan. Strength, balance, cardio, and nutrition. Let's talk about some specific strength training exercises that I like to use before a hike. One of my favorite exercises is squats. When doing squats, it's important to pay attention to the position of your back. You want to make sure that your back is straight, that your knees are not over your ankles, and also keep in mind that it's okay to modify any of these exercises to fit you wherever you are in your fitness journey. When doing a squat, you can go all the way down past your knees, but you don't have to. You can also do modified squats by simply squatting down only a little bit, or even using a chair underneath you to help you get back up. A great exercise for hiking is step ups. You can use a box in front of you or even your stairs to do this one. Simply step up with one leg at a time and step back down. As you build endurance, you can start adding in weight. Start wearing a backpack and pack it with the things that you'll be taking on your hike. For strengthening my core, I like the bird dog. To do this exercise, start on your hands and knees. Make sure to engage your core and keep your back straight while you extend one arm in front of you and the opposite leg behind you. Come back to center, still holding that core, and then reverse sides. An exercise that incorporates your hips and balance is the hip clock. To do this exercise, put your weight on one leg and reach your other leg out in front of you. From there, move your leg around your body like the hand of a clock. You can go all the way around or stop whenever your body tells you. It's important to listen to your body and not overextend yourself. Another element of training is stretching. These are some of my favorite stretches. First, start by doing a quad stretch. This one is pretty well known. Make sure that you are keeping your back straight once again and feeling really good stretched in your quad. Next, let's talk about stretching our hamstrings. This is something I love to do while out on the trail when my body starts feeling tight. I like to use trekking poles and leave my backpack on and just stretch right out in front of me. It's also important to stretch your calves. You can find a rock, a step, or anything to put the tip of your toes on and stretch your calves out. If none of those things are available, stretch your calves by putting your foot back and leaning into your knee. From this same position, if you bring your chest back, you can also stretch your hip flexor. The final piece of the puzzle is gear. When it comes to gear, I recommend training with what you'll be wearing on goal day. This ensures that you're comfortable, you're not gonna get any hot spots, and that your stuff is well broken in. I also really like to have a piece of gear to track my progress. That's why I really like this Garmin watch, but use whatever's comfortable for you. We've talked about all of the technical pieces of a big goal, but another really important thing to think about is staying motivated. Think about why you chose this in the first place. What drives you? What excites you about it? And focus on that when you're having days where you just don't really feel like doing anything. Whatever your reason for picking this goal is, I hope that you find your motivation and I can't wait to see you on the trail.